Okay, I know that maybe we're not arts and craftsers here, but quilters, but I thought, I just stumbled on that on Facebook and I thought it was pretty funny. Um, good morning, everybody. It's uh, October 4th, Wednesday, 23, right? Um, a lot has been going on here. My creativity is just going cray cray. So I want to show you what it looks like when things go cray cray in my sewing room. Actually, that must have been when I was recording what I'm going to be showing you today, which is foundation paper piecing. And how do you, you know, I'm going to turn my phone off. And how do you create a simple pattern? It's really quite easy. And why would you create a simple pattern versus doing it the traditional way without that? Okay, so that's, then. He, but hey, this is not complete. There's something really wrong here. And that would be this. <laughs> there she is. Also, you can see behind her, there is a cabinet. And that's going to be for the new kitchen that we're going to be doing. Well, that's not the cabinet, but I'm going to go for a darker wood tone because I want our family room and kitchen or our family room super small. We're going to take out the island, kind of open it up. And I want the kitchen to look like it's kind of like the family room. So that is going with me while I go look at tile and all that good stuff. All right. Here is, oh, I, I, I need my comments up. I need my comments up. There we go. Okay. Um, here's what's going on in my design wall right now. Let's talk a little bit about it. I am working with the hearts from the Quilt Builder card deck. I was very inspired by the hearts. The upper center one is the one that's pieced. And what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to not piece the hearts together till I have a better grounding on what's going to go with what. So I'm like making the half score triangles at the bottom and then I'm making the flying geese. And then I thought, okay, why a square on point? And I'm going to talk about that in the video. Why did I choose to do square on point? The other thing that's kind of funny, okay, so I put up that one that's smack in the center. That is a Dupiani silk center. I love it. Now, it is it is the Lone Ranger right now, so I'm going to have to put it in a couple times um, in other places, like maybe three times. I have been very, very grateful that some ties have been coming my way, and I'm working them in. That Those pink ties are impossible. I also, this is really sweet, and this is how we all work together as a group, is, um, I'm going to come back to that in a minute. I got contacted, did I need ties? And the answer was, they weren't in my color family, and did we know anybody, a uh, person's in Pleasanton, which is you could spit and hit it from here, and I thought of Rondi. And so Rondi is going to be the lucky recipient of these ties, but then they also found a... Um, pink brocade that I'm going to be getting a little bit of that too. So I'm very happy about that. But let me tell you something funny that happened here. If we go to, let's see, top left, it's square on point, go down that peach one there. I thought, you know, if there's that really bright one, I wonder what a peach one would be. And so I cut it out. I started sewing and I'm going, God, this doesn't feel right. I had forgotten to foundation paper piece, so it came out a completely different size. However, I think I like the peach in there. This is why it is so important to have a design wall. I can't pound on this enough. It just, I can't make these decisions on the floor. I just can't. The other thing in, in the um, quest for silk, I went on Etsy and I bought these uh, sari silks. And um, I don't I don't know if they're gonna work. I'm, I'm pretty sure this one will. I'm not sure about this one, it might be too bold, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hang them on my design wall and then just kind of look at them. Oh wow, that's pretty. Yeah, and just kind of look at them and see what I think. So at first I went, ugh, this will never work. Well, there goes 20 bucks. And then I thought, 
Well, they might. And I know in the end I will use them for something because I could just eat them up right now. I could also see a quilt out of these and oranges and yellows. Ooh, why do we get all jazzed on that stuff? But we certainly do. Oh, another discuss another <laughs> discovery. <laughs> now I got my eyes fixed. I don't have cataracts anymore, but I still need glasses when I'm doing uber close work. And I, there are classes everywhere in the house and I can, they're never where I want them. So this is my new invention yesterday. <laughs> it works. I, I had my glasses all day long, right at my fingertips. I, I think I even went through the pharmacy drive through with my adornment on. <laughs> Okay, I've gotten some really great um, emails from you guys, and I, I want to show, and if you're new to this jam, we have been meeting since the pandemic started, and we've been doing project after project after project, and I would have never started with ties because I'm really kind of throwing you guys out to the wolves, and I, I know that, but I, I, we've got chops here. And I can't wait to see what everybody's doing. Okay, so this is Bev's, her Sequoia. Um, I remember seeing this when it was in action, and uh, it was quilted by Susan. And I think that she did an absolutely beautiful job. I just love that straight line quilting. Can't go wrong with it. Also, when I saw this, I was reminded, well, I wonder how this would look in silk. Hmm. You'd have to be really careful, that's for sure. And then, I don't know, but I tripped upon this on the forum, and this is Francis's embroidery. All, if you're new, again, these are all things we've done since the beginning of the pandemic. And I will tell you, Francis really filled it in. You would almost think it was machine work. It's not, which makes it, in my book, that much better. It's just beautiful. Thank you for sending it. And then Lori sent me this. Ah, that embroidery stitchery that we did, where we basically worked on silk and did circles and filled them in with stitches and stitches and stitches. It is fabulous. Uh, she also, I wanted, she shared the back side of it, which I want to show you. That she did that with her circle maker, and that looks like it's Dupiani or Bernina circle maker. It looks like it's, um, looks like it is Dupiani. Okay, and then Noella finally finished the basket quilt, and it's so beautiful. It is so beautiful. And may I also comment that I love your backyard. It's just so inviting and so lush and so green. Then Sue sent this, spinning spools. Remember how we did that? And we did it in some really cool... Um, kind of wovens, just beautiful, super bright and cheery, but look, it's perfect for ties. So Sue, thank you on that. I would not have even circled back on that. That was, that was a fun project. And then this is Gail. Okay, so I got this picture from Gail uh, via Facebook, I believe, messaging, and you can see how old this is. And it's, you know, the best, um, it's the best, resolution I could get from her, but these are all made from silk ties. By the way, if you need to correspond with me, um, I, my email that I go by uh, uh, for this is A-L-E-X-A-N-D-R-S-N -S at gmail. And that goes for if you want your $100 Bernina gift certificate before you buy your Bernina. It's, I got to get it before, etc. Okay, and then... Wait, Oh, okay, and then this is Paula's. It's beautiful, beautiful. My guess is that was, had to have foundation paper piecing in it, I think. I think. And then this uh, person didn't have a name on the form. It was some sort of code, you know, sign-in name. Look at how beautiful this is on her bed. Just beautiful. Oh, I'm assuming it's a her, a she. Okay, and then the same person. Got a little blue ribbon there. We love that when it happens. 
Okay, and then uh, this is Rena's. Oh, this is really awesome. The red in it, I think she said five kimonos. It was the silk lining, four or five. And I'm just going to take a little lesson here of how much I love that the reds are not matchy match. It is fabulous. And in my humble opinion, way more fabulous than if it had all been matchy match red. Just beautiful. And she talked about, you know, whoops, she talked about, you know, the, the tie has the skinny part that goes back here, but then you can go off of both ends to get fabric. And that's what I find myself doing here. Okay. And then this is my buddy Robbins and she used Silk Dupiani and also um, ties in this. And this was, this was um, a challenge. I don't say challenge her because she's one of the most talented people I know, but this was stepping out of her comfort box. And I, I love that. I absolutely love that. The quilting was, well, that was very articulate. <laughs> um, Diane Schweikert did the quilting on it. Diane lives a couple blocks from me. She does beautiful stuff. And Robin intends to use this quilt in the living room. So she asked if Minky could go on the back. And all of us kind of scratched our heads and go, I don't know, but look at this. I flipped up the back of the quilt. So I thought that was pretty interesting. Okay, a couple questions came in. I'm going to need your help on this next one. Linda, I've never seen anything like this, a pleated tie. I have never seen anything like this. And it was like, should she take the pleats out? I think it's, I think it's too much work, but I think the pleats would drive me crazy in it. So... If you guys have any suggestions here on what to do, I don't know. It's an absolutely, I would say, groovy tie, and I don't know I wanted to get rid of it. It's just like, can you imagine the conversation starter with that? Oh, and then Sandra got hold of me, or Sandra, and she wants to do a New York beauty in honor of her dad out of ties. This is a class that you can Google at thequiltshow.com not Google, search at thequiltshow.com. I go over how to do this particular block foundation paper piece. But what I would do is I would foundation paper piece the spokes, and then I would probably do applique for the two arcs. Just make life easier for you. And I would use the Rosa Rojas way of doing it with Appliquick. If you haven't watched your show, it's certainly her show, it's certainly worth your time. I haven't done it. I don't see why it wouldn't work. Okay, here we go. I'm yapping too much. Let's talk about drafting. You're going to get two for the price of one today. Let's take a look-see. So as I look at my heart block and I want to start making other blocks, I have to consider what's going on within this. And what I see here are a bunch of triangles. Okay, you've got your half square triangle, you've got your quarter square triangle. But then when you really look, you've got this strong unit and you have this strong unit, which brings me to this. Okay, I thought it'd be fun to make some of these to throw in in between. All right, so how do I know how big to make it? Why am I paper piecing it and not just piecing it? Well, I know I want to make it this big, and we know that this is a six, uh, I'm sorry, an eight inch block, so this would be four by four. There you go. So why am I paper piecing it? In the case of this particular little block, I think you're going to end up with nicer points, and when you go to sew it together, you're sewing biases here and here and here. The chances of lining up these guys exactly right is uh, slim to nothing. So, okay, I don't have a paper piecing pattern that's exactly this. Oh, but it's so easy to do. So this is how you create the most simplest, simplest foundation paper piecing pattern in the world. And there are a lot of shapes that fall into this category, like flying geese, like isosceles triangle in a square, and so forth. Okay, I love eight to the inch graph paper. Let's see how we can get in here even closer. I know that there's four to the inch, but I think eight to the inch gives you better results. 
Also, in the case of this graph paper, you've got the solid lines where the inches, where the inch parts are. You can get eight to the inch, but it doesn't have these lines. Forget it. It'll drive you out of your flipping mind. So, how do you do this? The first thing I would do, because I know it's going to finish at four inches, I am going to drop in a four inch block. I mean, a four inch square on this graph paper. This is a, gosh, a, a ruler I've had forever. I probably even rotary cut with it back in the day. Don't do that now. You'll slice your finger off. You could easily also use a ruler like this, you know, your QS ruler. But the good thing about this ruler is that it's just skinnier. And so I think accuracy, you're going to get it better with this one. But I would not run out and buy this. It's not necessary. If you have it, go find it. So I'm going to draw a four inch square first. I'm using a friction pen. You could use a fine Sharpie a pencil. Not so great because when you go to Xerox it, you will lose it. All right, so I'm going to put my point exactly on that square. And then I'm going to come up and I'm going to find, here's here, here's here. One, two, three, four. I'm going to draw a line. All right. I'm creating the boundary of the block, the outside. So I'm going to go here. One, two, three, four. And here we go. Trust me, it's easy to get off on this. Again, especially if you don't have the graph paper that's got the solid lines for an inch. All right. This is so easy. So easy. Okay, so now I've got to put, drop in these lines. All right, well, if this is four inch, this is two inch. So I'm going to come down one, two, make a little mark. One, two, make a little mark. One, two, make a little mark, and so forth. And I'm just going to draw that line. Put your Again, your pen exactly on the spot. Go and pivot like this. It's, this is a little harder to do if you're working with the non-slip rulers because it, it won't just jiggle like this because it doesn't slip. Okay. And then here. Yeah, can you believe it? Back in the day when rotary cutters came out, this is what we used. Yeah, because you knew not to use metal. All right. There's your pattern. Now, the next thing I would do is perhaps, oh, we'll figure out sizes in a minute of what to cut your, pre-cut your fabric. I would go on the outside, come out a quarter inch, all right, and I would do dotted lines and the, um, down this thing. And that's where, you're, where you will ultimately be cutting it when the block is pieced. And the reason I would do this, even though I am a trained professional, I can tell you how easy it would be to lob, you know, to trim exactly there. And oh, that's a sad day. I've seen it happen. <laughs> you know, I used to be really afraid of foundation paper piecing, and it's really not my go-to. But in a case like this, it's it's a flipping lifesaver from things getting for, to making the square stay perfect. And again, with this crazy silk. You don't have a lot of room for forgiveness, for wiggle, for give and take. Okay, there we go. Now, what am I going to cut my center square at? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put this ruler away now. Get back this one. I am going to measure from here to here. Well, it's almost three inches. So I'm going to cut the square at three and a half because we know that's the magic number when you're cutting a square. It's half an inch. So I'm going to cut this three and a half. And guess what? It doesn't have to be perfect. And in the end, you will trim. But now these outside triangles can be a little more tricky. So I'm measuring from here to here. It's two inches. So I could conceivably do two and seven eighths, but you know what? I'm going to go three and a half because actually, let me say that again. So here you've got 
two, so you would do two and seven eighths, at least cut it at three, but I'm gonna add, or three and a quarter, but I'm gonna add even more because this can be really funky. So I'm actually gonna do this at three and a half and three and a half and be really happy that I've got the leeway on this to be able to, well, you'll see when I sew and flip and sew and all that. Okay, the other thing I did was I drew it twice on the master copy, and then I went and I printed Quilter Select print and piece, all right, and I can get two per page. Then the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna rough cut this out. Now this is not paper, it is a fiber, and so what happens is you can take it out or you can leave it in and it, it will wash out and or eventually break down and or you can wet the seams and pull things out. So you've got a lot of options here, but well, it feels like paper, it's not. It's a, a fiber product. So I'm going to go cut, before we go to the machine, a three and a half inch square and two three and a half inch squares and cut them corner to corner. And I'll see you at the sewing machine. <clears throat> so I'm sitting there watching going, okay, so what's next? <laughs> All right, I, I'm, in, I'm in control here. <laughs> Because I'm going to go to the next video. Okay, here we go. I'm more than happy, thrilled to take questions uh, when we're done. All right? And I love that I can watch the questions while this is going on. So here I am all snuggled up to my sewing machine. And before we get started, I would say that you take your stitch length down to a two or even a little bit less than that. All right? And again, I'm using a 60 weight on top and an 80 weight thread on the bobbin. The other thing you might be wondering, because I alluded to this in the first le lesson and I've changed my mind, even though I'm gonna be working with this print in piece, I am still going to make, stabilize the back with fabric prep. You just need all the help you can get. Now, when you're foundation paper piecing, you've got to turn your brain upside down. And for someone who's dyslexic, that now you're talking a triple challenge, okay? So <clears throat> starting with upside down, I don't want to look at the drawn lines. I want to look at the back side because in the end, I will be sewing on the lines, okay? So I've cut this at three and a half and you can vaguely see through here the uh, lines that you'll be stitching on. And what I would do is position this as best as I think I can on the center of that square, loosely pin it in shape, and then hold it up to a light, which you won't be able to see, so you're gonna to have to trust me, to make sure that it's evenly balanced here. And actually, this side is a little fat, and this side needs a little bit more, meaning a quarter of an inch um, around the edge, not less than, if possible. <laughs> All the caveats, if possible. Okay, you're gonna have to trust me that I've done it right, yippee. All right, now I am not going to sew yet. Oh, I wanna show the little triangles that I cut out with the three and a half. I think there's some in here that are three and a quarter too. But essentially, I'm gonna be able to make uh, two different blocks with this, so that's pretty darn exciting. I wanna make sure I'm not duping anything, like here, and I'll put here. So we'll work with this pile, and I'm gonna put this pile away. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take, let's just take this one, all right? And I'm going to line it up so that I've got equal bunny ears on each side hanging out. And what I would do is actually a couple things. Um, I want to not have this happen. I want to be able to line it just like a piecing as best you can. There is forgiveness here though, folks, there is forgiveness. <clears throat> then the next thing I would do at a minimum is glue down these end points because I can't tell you how many times I've sewn along and they've gotten flopped back in, and that's just not a pretty picture. You could also drop in pins too. A little bit goes a long way when you're working with silk ties. 
Oh my gosh, I'm having so much fun. All right, so I'm gonna turn this over. And what I'm going to do <clears throat> is I'm gonna stitch from out here somewhere all the way down here. Remember, a tighter stitch down to here, and then I'm gonna cut it. You do not need to back stitch, please no. So let me get this camera turned around. Forgive me Well, I cover it up. I learned that from Justin at Super Seminars, only he was much better at it than I. Let's see what we have going on here. Well, upside down, forget it. We're gonna do it right side up. Also, I keep droning on the single hole throat plate, which if you don't own and you've got a fancier machine, you really, truly need to get your hands on that because um, if it's a wider hole in here, like for zigzag and stuff like that, it's going to get crammed down into it. So what I'm going to do is here's the piece. I'm going to turn it over and I am going to stitch from this outside area. Well, let's just do it. And again, this is fabulous. I don't have my glasses <laughs> Oh, I love having my cataracts out, but man. And I got 20-20 vision back, so that's amazing. But still for sewing, it's nice to have just a little bit of help. I'm using my uh, quarter-inch foot. Okay, now I'm just going to cut it. And a smart person would have also prepared the other side. <laughs> so I could just flip it over and sew. So let me just do that right now. Sometimes I'm not always the brightest bulb in the room. But hey, we all, that's the beauty of doing this live and all that good stuff, right? Oh, also I'm gonna talk about pins. Um, these pins are beautiful. They are Quilter Select. There are lots of beautiful pins on the market. But you're going to want to use extra fine glass head pins, silk glass head pins. And um, if you use things bigger, it's going, to, it's going to cause you problems down the road. And pins, like thread, they do bend. They do break. They do all that stuff. And you just have to be willing to replace them here and there. What I like about the QS pins are that they're in this little tin box with a magnet on the bottom. So they just you just throw the pin in there, which is lovely. Okay, I'm gonna cut it. And then let's see what we're into. All right, let me get my, this over here. This is Dangerous Living doing live reveal on air. <laughs> okay, here we go. One, two, three. All right, and then Clear this up a little bit. I'm going to press for the first time. And I'm going to press, hopefully, not this cord. Get that out of the way. Again, I'm using a medium heat. So when you when you fold it over, what you want to make sure is that as you fold it over, the you can't see the cut line on the other side up here, the paper. So I've made it, I've cleared it. Okay. I'm going to take my little iron, who's on standby, go like this, probably put the clapper on too. You know, you could get a whole bunch of these clappers in different sizes. I just happen to have the big steady Betty. All right. And then I'm going to do this side. Did I make the clearance? Haha, uh -huh, I did. All right. Like that. Make sure you aren't pressing tucks in there. I I've mentioned this in the past. I am a absolute freak about that. Okay. I might even put on some of this acorn, just a little bit. Make it a little bit flatter. Oh, whoops, an iron would be better than the clapper. <laughs> okay. There we go. And now it's time to sew on this side and this side. So this looks like a jolly one to go here. Ooh, this is really pretty. On a couple of the centers, I have used Dupiani silk, just solid, and it seems to be working. I think I mentioned before that when I did Oak Shot, um, it just went a little too flat. Now, 
I could see this whole quilt out of oak shop, that's for sure. Okay. And see, by cutting these triangles a little bit bigger, it gives you the luxury of not having to freak out when you um, go to flip it. You're going to be okay. And, and, and if, for some reason, you have to pick it out, just one, you know, every other stitch, just with your seam ripper. Okay, now let me, let's see. We've got that one. We've got that one. Oh, I love this tie. Love this tie. Okay, so let's do, this is what I should have done the first time around. So your time is more efficient. All right. A little glue stick. I plow through these glue sticks like there is no tomorrow. It comes with one refill, and then you can buy refills at four in a pack. Did that slip a little bit? No, it's okay. All right, let's go back to the sewing machine. I wonder, and I know the answer is yes, that when you guys sew, does your sewing room just get turned upside down, inside out? <laughs> Somehow I think I know the answer to that. All right. So I've done this side, and I've done this side. I'm using kind of like a soft gray colored thread in both the top and the bottom. I figured it was a nice in-betweener for the pinks and the blues. Snip, snip. And then I'm going to flip. I made it. I know I did. Oh, man. This one's by the skin of my, the, the hair on my chinny chin chin. <laughs> this one's got plenty. All right. I'm not kidding. I really was opposed to foundation paper piecing um, when it came out. Mainly probably because so many of the designs just were not my cuppa. But when I can do, you know, hard, difficult piecing, and while this doesn't look difficult, it can be tricky, um, it really comes in handy. All right. So then you go ahead and you trim on the dotted lines. And I can guarantee you, if you don't have these dotted lines, you're going to one time trim here and then you're going to be crying. So trim, 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 turn it over, and then you have a beautiful square on point that will match up perfectly with your next block. Love this block. Okay, so that's how easy it is. And I got some really good questions here that I want to answer. First of all, I do want to say in the video, I said cut two squares for the outside wings and then cut it corner to corner. The reason I chose to do four squares was so that each corner could be differently, could be done differently. Right? <laughs> sense all right uh, back of the silk I put on it called fabric prep it's a very it's quilter select fabric prep it's a very light mesh that virtually almost disappears when it's in there I've hand quilted through it before it's just no big deal but it helps stabilize the ties because these ties are cut you know on a bias it, it, you know so you need all a little help from your friends now the other thing is some of you have emailed me and asked me about other products. I haven't worked with them, but what you want is a super meshy fabric, stay meshy, lightweight stabilizer. That's what you want. And uh, fabric prep just happens to fill that bill. Okay. The other thing, 
super fine glass head pins. I don't think you, I saw, I was watching this. Had I ironed over a plastic head pin, it would have melted into the fabric. Do not cheap out on your pins. Uh, you only have to do that once or twice to learn your lesson. And then the other thing, in case you haven't been on the news today, at 2.20 Eastern Time, there's going to be an emergency, like, you know, 40 minutes from here, an emergency system going off on your phone, on your TV. I'm not sure if it'll be on Sirius and stuff like that, but understand it is a test and they have been warning this all over, all over media today. But if you're like me and try and stay away from media, you could easily miss it and kind of freak out. <laughs> okay. I wish we could share photos here of our sewing room. You know, Carol, here, that's an actually great idea. And not now, because I'm crunched between now and Houston when I'm going to go to market. But basically, I'm going to be teaching classes on Monday. I had, like we just did here, I had to do it today because sadly we had a funeral. Um, and then do something fun the second day on the Wednesday. Like, remember when we had, we had our own little private quilt show? That was pretty awesome. I think that is a great idea. Don't let me forget it, anybody, okay? Don't let me forget it. And maybe what we'll say is you have no more than, what do we want to say? Three photos, two photos, or whatever. So think about that. What best explains your sewing room? I love that idea, Carol. I love it. I love it. I love it. So I want to thank you all for watching. Sorry we're a little bit long today. I try and honor your time, but actually you almost got two lessons in one and we'll see you Monday. We'll do some learning and I'll do some teaching. I'm not quite sure what yet and have a great weekend. And again, don't freak out at 2:20 Eastern time. Best if not picked up. <laughs> You know what? I'm going to make that the rule. <laughs> hey, everybody. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful weekend. Bye-bye.